Okay, so I'm gonna get started. Um, announcements for today, we had the exam review session yesterday and the lecture capture video is linked from the course website. Um, also, hopefully you're aware that the exam is tomorrow, seven to 9 p.m. in Chem 140. Um, I know I might have told some of you a cutoff point in the notes that's further along than this, but after sort of looking at it over the weekend, I decided I will not be testing this exam on directing effects. So. We're going to go up through mid page five in the chapter 16 notes. Um, but I guess when you're looking at exams in the archive, you can sort of tell what problems are fair game. Basically, if you're trying to add something to an aromatic ring that already has stuff on it, um, it is not fair game to ask you which position on the ring something you would be adding. Um, however, I can, for example, like give you the product. So like, let me draw what I mean, I guess. Um, okay, so say <coughs> this thing here, if I do like maybe FEBR3 and BR2, fair game would not be asking you to show like what the regiochemistry of the products are, like ortho versus meta versus para. But if I did tell you, hey, this makes, say, the ortho product, how would the mechanism for that look, that would be fair game because I think we've covered all the pieces that you know or that you need to be, able, to be able to go through the mechanism for that. Okay, so um, although actually showing the resonance forms on that it's not really fair either. Okay, so scratch that. Um, <laughs> All right, so I think I'm just going to avoid asking anything about regiochemistry altogether. Basically, if you're doing stuff to an aromatic ring, um, it's going to not have any substituents on it to begin with. That's fair game. So the predict the products or show the mechanism um, that kind of level of thing would be fair game for us. Okay, um, so questions about that? Thank you. Mm, yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, I realized like what 36 hours on the material is kind of short notice, so um, yeah, it'll show up on exam two, of course, so pay attention today, but you won't have to like learn it super fast for tomorrow's exam. Okay, so. Uh, that said, um, so last time we started getting a little bit into directing effects. So that's kind of what we're going to try getting through all of today. Okay, 
So directing effects. Um, so I guess that's kind of what we're looking at is this sort of reaction where we've got an aromatic ring. We're adding stuff to it by an EAS reaction, um, any one of them that we've covered. Um, but since we have something on the ring to begin with, now we have to worry about ortho versus meta versus para. So ortho versus meta versus para products for dye substituted rings. And um, we're also going to look at activating and deactivating effects. So this is basically, does the reaction go faster or slower as a result of what we got on there? So um, I think I put this up last time, but just as a reminder, all of these are based on the group that's on the ring to begin with. Okay, so this is like a real common thing where people get caught up. They're like, okay, I'm adding a bromine to the ring. Is bromine activating or deactivating or whatever? It doesn't matter. All that matters is the thing that's on the ring before the reaction happens. It gets full control over how the reaction goes. Okay. So um, we started in on the first category last time, which was activating and ortho para directing. Okay, so patterns to look for here, um, anything with a lone pair on the atom attached to the ring. So if you've got like an oxygen here, that counts, an ether group, any kind of nitrogen with a lone pair. Um, and it also counts if you've got like some other carbonyl type group or something attached out the far side. So um, this counts, or this counts. Um, or just a simple R group also counts. So we briefly looked at this last time, but um, R groups are electron donating. Um, weakly through hyperconjugation. Which is the whole deal of why carbocations are more stable when they're more substituted, just because these R groups are very slightly chipping in some electron density and stabilizing a positive charge. That's actually exactly what they're going to be doing during this reaction too. And then all the rest of these are electron donating by straight up resonance. So we can see both examples of this in the mechanisms that we'll look at in a bit. But let's go through the three categories first. OK. Um, so I think that's where we got up through last time. and then. One kind of thing that I think I pointed out last time is that this doesn't actually include halogens. Those actually turn out to be in their own separate category. So we'll get to those in a second here. OK, so any questions about that before we go to group two? OK, yeah. Does it negatively charge carbon on a ring? Uh, mm -hmm. 
Um, so, uh, you mean like if we're doing a reaction that was instead of like electrophilic aromatic substitution where it makes a carbocation, like if we made a carbanion there instead? Yeah. If it were a carbanion. Ah, so that is an excellent question. Um, we're going to cover that reaction a couple chapters from now. And it turns out everything there is like the opposite of what we're covering here through electrophilic aromatic substitution. So once we start doing nucleophilic aromatic substitution, like we need to stabilize a negative charge, and then all of these are going to be hurting the reaction instead of helping it. So yeah, but for now we're just doing positive charge stabilization. So, yep. Okay. So next category is deactivating and meta directing. So this includes electron withdrawing groups. which we saw a little bit of in the deals alder section. Um, so kind of the tip off here is either a positive charge or a delta positive at the atom on ring, uh, at the point of attachment. Okay, so most commonly that's going to be some kind of multiple bonds to an electronegative atom. So anything with a carbonyl at the point of attachment, like that. Because for all of these, the carbon has a fairly sizable delta positive there. Um, or it doesn't have to be a carbon with the multiple bonds. It could be sulfur. We know that sulfur with that many double bond O's has a pretty big delta positive too. Or sulfonate ester, which we haven't really seen much of, but you can make those too. Or it could be a triple bond instead of a double bond. This has a delta positive. Or, um, we could have a full-on positive charge at the atom of point of attachment. Um, so I guess keep an eye out for this one. This is the one case where nitrogen is not actually acting as an electron donating group, and that's because this is the one case where it has a positive charge instead of a lone pair on it. So that switches it to this category. Okay. Um, so questions about those ones. Okay, cool. So. Um, I guess for, I should have probably done this before going on to the next category. So activating means that having any of these groups on the ring means that it's going to speed up the reaction, but it speeds it up most at the ortho and para positions. Here, it's going to slow down the reaction no matter where you're attacking or where you're sticking the new group, but it slows it down the least at the meta positions. So. So all the positions around the ring are going to be less reactive for EAS now if you have any of those deactivating meta-directing groups on there. But um, it turns out they slow it down the most um, I guess the strongest effect or worst slowdown at the positions ortho and para. And so that means that meta is kind of the least bad option. Okay. So again, we'll go through the mechanism for some examples of this, um, but I just want to get the groups listed first. Okay, any questions so far? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, exactly, yep. Welcome. 
Okay, so. All right, so halogens are sort of their own weird thing here. Um, these are slightly deactivating and ortho power directing. Um, the reason that these are sort of a weird crossover group is that they sort of are electron donating in some ways and electron withdrawing in some ways. Because they're electron donating because they have a lone pair which puts them in category one. So electron donating by resonance. But they're also electron withdrawing by inductance. So um, the halogen can sort of kick in some electrons by resonance if you're doing the actual arrow pushing. But at the same time, it's still like sucking some electron density back out of the ring by just having very polar bonds to it due to high electronegativity. So they're sort of canceling out their own effects to some extent. But it turns out resonance helps the ortho and para positions the most. So they end up being ortho para directing. Okay. So just the halogens here. And then also, as it turns out, halomethyl groups, like any sort of CH2Br, CH2I, um, turn out to sort of be in this category where they're still ortho power directing, but they're still pulling a little bit of electron density out towards themselves. OK. So let's start going through the mechanisms for some examples here and look at why things end up directing and activating the way that they do. Okay. So really everything comes down to how well is the carbocation stabilized during the reaction because we know that um, during EAS you have a carbocation on the ring when you've got broken aromaticity and then it just comes down to is that carbocation going to be stabilized or destabilized by whatever's on the ring to begin with? Okay. So um, the first couple of examples I'm going to walk through are for an electron donating, um, I guess I should say, for activating ortho para directing group. So let's do OH as kind of an example. So for all of these, you pretty much want to go through and show the mechanism like what if we try to add something ortho, what if we try to add something meta, what if we try to add something para, how well stabilized is the intermediate in all of those cases. So if we go ortho, Um, so ortho, as a reminder, is the one right next to the OH group. Um, we can add it to either position, but to keep it consistent with the notes, I'm going to add it to this top carbon up here. Um, so it honestly doesn't even matter what electrophile we're using here. What matters is the group that's on the ring to begin with. So I'm just going to show it as E plus. 
And then I want to have a double bond that connects to an ortho position carbon go out and attack the electrophile. And depending on how you happen to have shown the bonds by resonance, that might look a couple different ways. But so long as it's a bond that involves an ortho carbon, it's still going to work out. So I'm going to pick that double bond to go attack the electrophile. And that puts me at here. OK, so now everything comes down to how am I going to stabilize that carbocata? And that's not ortho. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I was looking at the wrong section of my notes. OK, there we go. So um, all right, so I've got the electrophile added to the ortho carbon. Um, I've got a plus charge over here. So. I'm going to show resonance to see where the carbocation can be in this molecule. So when we're moving it around the ring, if you remember looking for that three atom subunit, I've got two atoms with a pi bond here, and I got one atom with a charge. I can just sort of flip which end is which around. And that gets me to here. And then I can do it again. Here's another three atom group. Resonance lets me move it around. To there. OK, so no matter what we're doing for any electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction, with or without stuff already attached to the ring, we're always going to have at least three resonance forms. Because basically, you can get the plus charge onto every alternating carbon around the ring by doing this three atom thing. So it's basically carbons like one, three, and five can bear the positive charge. But depending on what's already on the ring, you might have access to a fourth resonance form or more, where you can actually take the charge out onto one of the groups that's already attached to the ring. So that's what we're going to do here. And this is why lone pairs are electron donating by resonance, because I can take the lone pairs on oxygen, straight up do a resonance form where they kick down onto the carbocation. And that gets me to this resonance form. All right, so I guess um, those of you who were at the review session yesterday, I sort of covered an exam question that looked at this a little bit. But um, if I number these structures 1, 2, 3, and 4, um, which looks like the best, most stable resonance form to you? Four. Yep, good. Because the positive charge is on the oxygen, not on a carbon. OK, so this is the most stable resonance form. And it's something I wouldn't be able to do if I didn't have that oxygen on the ring. So given that we're stabilizing the intermediate here, which is kind of the highest energy point on the energy diagram for this reaction, um, anything we can do to like lower the barrier that this molecule has to go over, anything we can do to stabilize the carbocation by maybe not even making it be a carbocation all the time, the easier this reaction is going to be and the faster it's going to go. So. We're speeding up the reaction by having the oxygen on the ring. OK, so from here, um, you got some options of how to show the reaction finishing up. Like always, we got to pull the H off and get back to aromaticity. Um, since these are all resonance forms, we can always go back and forth from any resonance form to any other resonance form. And also, if there's a step that needs to happen to finish up the reaction, we can show it happening to any other resonance forms. But some of them are going to require a little bit more arrow pushing than others. Um, let's do it to this end one, just as an example. So whatever base we have around, uh, maybe better not put a minus charge on there, but whatever base we have around is going to come and pull off the H um, after this has been sitting around for a while. So we knew we got to do an elimination, reestablish aromaticity here. Uh, one option is, I can kick this down to where the carbocation was, 
and pretty much do arrows reversing all of the changes that I've done during all of the resonance forms to get back to where I was. Or, since I happen to be like right next to where I need to form a double bond to the left there anyway, I could just show the double bond forming there. Um, I'm going to end up with benzene with like uh, with the aromatic ring with its double bonds shown in the other kind of locations from where they were when I started, but it's the same thing, so that works. Okay, so that gets me the ortho substituted product. Okay, I think in the notes it looks like I didn't actually show the final step happening, but I guess if you want to sort of do it as practice for yourself, that might be a thing to take a look at. But pretty much like any resonance form you show finishing up the reaction, you should still be able to get arrow pushing that works. You might just have to have a couple double bonds shifting around on the way there. Okay, questions about this one? All right, cool. So let's try this meta. Um, I guess do a label here. So that's if we go ortho, if we go meta, okay, so again, we're going to have the same electrophile, the same phenol aromatic ring. Um, I'm just going to use the same double bond again, but now I'm going to choose to have my electrophile being added on to the meta position. Okay, so again, I can show resonance. I can get the carbocation to every alternating carbon around the ring. here. Okay, so that's actually it. Those are my only three options, are just the three default ones where it's every alternating carbon around the ring. I never actually get the opportunity to use the lone pair on the oxygen because I never get to a point like up here where the positive charge is actually on the carbon where the oxygen's attached. So I can't do the uh, kick down the lone pairs to a carbocation on the next atom over kind of move. Okay, so it's not that any of these forms are bad. I mean, they're not great, but they're not as good as getting this form up here where there are no carbocations or unfilled octets. So I guess like unfo all forms have unfilled octets here. Okay, so that's kind of the two, I guess, types of outcomes. Either you have the option of stabilizing the charge with the lone pair on oxygen, or you don't. Um, turns out meta doesn't give you that option, and that's why meta doesn't get sped up by having an OH group on the ring. So the ortho is going to be much faster and easier than the meta. Um, if we do para real quick. It's actually going to be real similar to ortho. Um, here I'm going to use this double bond here because I want to attach electrophile on here. So the double bond I'm going to use involves that para carbon. Alright. Okay. So here um, we get a positive charge on this carbon again. Look for a three atom group. Puts me there with the positive charge. Or I could do the same thing.
here. Okay, so if you look, I end up with the three places on the ring that take the carbocation being the same three places that they did up here in the ortho attack. So ortho and para should end up giving you the same carbocation locations. You're just going to have the electrophile in a little different or in a different place. Um, but at some point, we do go through this form where there's a plus charge on the atom attached to the lone pair electron donating group. Um, you could do like branching resonance forms off of here, but remember you can convert any resonance form to any other resonance form. You just might need a few more arrows to get there. So let's kind of practice that. Um, let's show the arrows for how this thing would get back to having a carbocation here. And also let's show that carbocation immediately getting stabilized by the oxygen. So that should get us to this, which just like ortho is way better than your other options. Okay, and then again, we can finish up the reaction just by deprotonating and rearomatizing. Um, let's do base coming in. Let me get this out of the way. So base comes in, takes the H. Um, here's one example where we will have to do a little bit of electron pushing to get the arrows back to where we need them to be. So we could form a double bond here, which would require this double bond to break which would require that double bond to break back onto the oxygen. Okay, so pretty much wherever you pull off the H, you better have a chain of arrows that ends up dumping stuff onto whatever the positive charge is um, on whichever resonance form you happen to show getting deprotonated. But there's like, you could do this to any one of the resonance forms, so there's four different options of how to show this, in other words. Okay, so... That should get you to power product. Okay, so take home message from this once we sort of take a step back is that ortho and para are great at this reaction. Meta is not bad, but it's not great either. Okay, questions about those three? Yeah. Now, is it still sped up with meta? Just not really much? And it actually kind of depends on exactly where the balance is between like because I guess like oxygen is also a little bit electron withdrawing by inductance, kind of like how engines are, just not as much. Um, so then it kind of comes down to like exactly where the balance is between them. Um, so I think it is still sped up in general for like an oxygen or a nitrogen with a lone pair, but um, it's probably pretty close to like default benzene, I, I would guess, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, um, yeah, you can show like either this or you can show something specific for that reaction or you can even like not show anything at all, like ambiguous deprotonation I'm totally okay with, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm kind of doing it like a generic one here because I was generic about what electrophile I was using in the first place. Um, but yeah, there's, I'm not going to be super picky about how that looks as long as it's not something completely ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Um, for an electron donating group that can actually like do resonance and kick in electrons, yes, that is true. Um, but if we were doing this for, say, an R group that's still electron donating by inductance, then we wouldn't have this fourth option. Um, so this would be ruled out, but we would still have a form where we have the carbocation like right next to an R group, and that would be stabilized that way. Um, so yeah, usually you only get the fourth like extra stable form if you got lone pairs on something. So, mm -hmm. okay. Okay, so this is all for activating orthopara directing groups. Now let's go through a deactivating meta directing group and see how that kind of breaks down.
OK. So if we do ortho, uh, OK, so I'm going to use nitro because it's actually the strongest of the deactivating groups, as it turns out, because it's the only one with a full-on positive charge on that atom. Um, OK, so let's do an ortho attack. Just like before, if I want to attach my electrophile to, say, this ortho carbon, I'm going to have to attack with the double bond that is involved with that ortho carbon, so like that. Okay, and I'm actually like drawing out the specific details of the nitro group here just because I want to be clear that there's a positive charge on this atom and that's a problem. Okay, so we got, just like up here, we get our electrophile attached ortho, which means the carbocations, I guess, at the meta position to the nitro group. And now we can start shoving that around the ring. there. Or like here. And this should look extremely unlikely and unpleasant to you because we've got two different positive charged atoms attached directly right next to each other. And we know charge repulsion is kind of a big deal. Um, so this uh, resonance form is very destabilized. Okay, so if we have an alternative where we don't have to put up with that, um, then we should do that instead. Okay, I guess if you want, you can wrap up the reaction here and just show like pretty much the same as we did up there. Okay, um, so if we do ortho, uh, if we do meta, then. Again, this is pretty analogous to the meta reaction up there, it's at first at least. Okay, so I can have my plus charge there or there. Or there. So I still have just the three positions around the ring, which is not great. But at least I'm avoiding this nonsense up here, where I have two positive charges right next to each other. So this is kind of the least bad option for regiochemistry on this reaction. Not great, but avoids adjacent positive charges at least. Okay. So you will still have some destabilization of these compared to if the nitro group weren't there, just because this positive charge is still like inductively pulling electron density towards it. So even though it's not as horrible as having the positive charge here, um, it's still down here feeling the effects of the nitro group, like destabilizing it a little bit. Okay, so um, I guess the take home message for this is that deactivating metadirecting groups screw up all the options around the ring. They're going to deactivate the reaction overall but meta is the least affected and ortho power the most affected. Um, by contrast, up here, 
um, electron donating groups speed up the reaction slightly at all points. Um, just it's much more noticeable at the ortho and power position. And um, I guess at the meta, it may or may not speed it up depending on exactly how um, it's doing its electron donation and if there's a little bit of electron withdrawing by inductance going on at the same time. Okay. Um, so questions about those? I know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, so unfortunately, we don't have a whole lot of control over it, so they're both about equally stabilized. Um, we're going to cover towards the end of this chapter, um, maybe today, maybe not, um, a little bit of how we can pick and choose one over the other. Okay, um, so other questions about these ones? All right, cool. Okay, so I think I'm going to skip para in the interests of time, but it's pretty much analogous to what the ortho thing does, where you end up with two positive charges right next to each other, and that's a problem. Okay, so um, what this means in terms of practical applications. So, consequences of all this. We know that our groups are activating, they speed the reaction up when they're on the ring. So if we're doing friedel crafts um, alkylation specifically, we're going to add an R group onto the ring. We saw that last lecture. So far, so good. We stuck an R group on there. But left or right, which one of these is more reactive to future friedel crafts reactions? Right, yeah, because I just put on an activating group. So first time is going to be normal speed. Now I've made something that reacts slightly faster. And that R group, maybe it sticks on ortho, maybe it sticks on para. We don't have a whole lot of say about that. We'll probably get a mixture of both. Uh, third time is going to be faster still because now I've got two activating groups on there. And so on. Um, so basically this thing is just going to get sort of a runaway alkylation thing going on where it's just going to start cramming our groups onto the ring faster and faster until it's forced to stop by sterics. or until you run out of equivalence of alkyl halide. So um, a lot of the time, if they want you to just monoalkylate a ring, or if you're trying to set up a reaction so that you are monoalkylating something, um, a lot of the time you'll have to set it up with a whole lot of excess benzene in there. For example, using benzene as the actual solvent so that there's so few R groups to go around relative to the benzene that on average everything is just going to get the one R group added on there. Even then, like, depending on how much more reactive it is, you probably still will get some dye or trialkylated stuff. Okay, so that's one problem that sort of ties into this whole regiochemistry thing. Um, another is that um, Friedel crafts, as it turns out, both types of Friedel crafts are actually fairly sensitive to slowdown. Um, they're very sensitive to deactivation in a way that the other EAS reactions are not. So um, basically anything meta-directing on the ring is going to kill off the rate for Friedel crafts enough that we would consider it no reaction.
So any meta directing group is going to stop Friedel crafts from happening. So if we have like a nitro group on here and we try to isolate it, nothing's going to happen on a reasonable time frame. Um, you can sort of work around it with harsher conditions or different catalysts, but um, in general, it's really hard. It turns out that the uh, electrophile that you make through either type of friedel crafts reaction is just not as powerful an electrophile as you get from the other types of EAS reactions, and so having just a deactivating group on the ring is enough to kill the reaction off. Okay. Questions about those two things? Uh, yeah, sorry. Um, mm -hmm. So when you say meta directing, you mean in terms of deactivation? Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't it be ortho para in terms of deactivation since those are the. Because meta mm -hmm. is like the least deactivated mm -hmm. of the. Time. Right. So I guess like when we say directing, it's sort of like which position is going to actually get the electrophile added to it. So you're right that the, uh, the deactivating effects kind of target the ortho and para position most strongly. But that leaves you with like meta as the favored product, basically. So it's sort of named after like when you do this reaction and like look at the products on NMR, like what did you actually get out of it, kind of, so if that makes sense. So you mm -hmm. really won't see meta. Right. Um, you might see like a tiny percent product, um, but yeah, the, the major is going to be like a mixture of ortho and para. So, and we don't have too much control over the balance between those either, unfortunately, yet. Okay. So um, in terms of using this for synthesis. Let's go through a couple examples of how to string reactions together to get what we want. So order of addition is important. So if I start out with benzene and I do nitration first, and then I do halogenation. I've got the meta directing group on here first. So that means no matter what reaction I do next, assuming it's a reaction that works at all, i.e. not Friedel Crafts, um, nitro gets to say where the new group adds, so I'm going to get the meta product out of here. If I did things the other way around, where I did halogenation first, and then I did nitration. Now I've got an ortho para directing product on here. which means I'm going to get a mixture of the ortho product and the para product on here. Okay, so sometimes there is no good way to do a synthesis, either because neither of the groups have the directing effects that you want, or because the group that you need to put on first um, turns out to be deactivating and it shuts down the reaction that you're trying to do, like Friedel crafts. So sometimes there is no good way, but there are workarounds that we'll sort of cover um, in a few cases in the future. All right. Um, I think I'm about out of time, so I'll wrap it up there and then um, see you guys at the test Tuesday night.